director of Girls in Tech. And for those of you that don't know, Girls in Tech is a nonprofit organization here in the Twin Cities that brings together women working in technology, and we do outreach to get younger girls engaged in technology. Uh, so this event is kind of an idea of things that we do in the community to engage younger girls. Uh, some upcoming events that we have that I want you all to know about are the She's Geeky event that we are doing in February. And I think the, the dates are the 22nd and the 23rd, whatever that third weekend is, it's a Saturday, Sunday. So if I got the numbers wrong, you can figure that out. Uh, and then we also have a new mentorship program that we are launching. So we are looking to uh, have girls in middle school, high school, maybe even college, so figuring those details out, uh, be paired with adult professionals working in technology. Um, so we will send out more details about that event if you are signed up on our mailing list. Uh, and if you uh, signed up through Eventbrite for this event, you are now on our mailing list. You are welcome. Um, yeah. So without further ado, I am here to introduce Sarah Sturman. Uh, she is the author of The Code Witch and came all the way to us from Stanford University today where she is studying computer science and product design. When she is not being a tech geek, that, those are my words, uh, she likes to bake bread and do karate. Uh, goals for the future include hiking the Appalachian Trail and reading all books in the world. Uh, so, everyone, give, uh, help me give a warm welcome to Sarah. Hi, thank you guys for having me. Um, so, I'm here to talk about the book a little bit. Um, the very fact that you guys, for all the all the kids here, um, are here means you know way more about programming than I did at your age. Uh, mostly because I had no idea what it was and had never seen code until I was 20, I think. Um, so I am studying at Stanford. Um, I started out doing engineering and Latin in college and after a couple of years took a programming class and thought it was really cool. Um, kept doing that, was encouraged by some professors, some friends, um, and got to my senior year. And one of the things that you do in product design, which is what I study, which is a kind of engineering that looks at the, the question of what do we want to build before we start asking how do we build it. Um, and what I got to do my senior year was pick any sort of project I wanted to and make anything real in the world. And so the question that I was looking at was, why are there so few women in all of my CS classes? Why, when I look around the rooms, is it mostly guys? And it, it's a tricky question, and I'm sure a lot of the adults here have seen this in industry um, as well. And so I spent about six months studying that, like talking to middle schoolers. Um, this book never would have happened without all the kids who like came and talked with us and let us sit in it on their uh, programming classes. But um, what I saw and what I kind of found was that kids like and girls are super excited about this stuff. If they know what coding is and programming is, um, people get thrilled because how you build things is really, really cool. Um, I got into engineering and I bet a lot of you here like, like taking things apart and kind of seeing how they work. And that's really easy for like physical products. You can take apart a TV or you can take apart a computer hard drive and you can see all the spinning things inside and how it works. It's a lot harder to take apart a computer program because there's nothing physical there. So unless you know how to do it and what to look for inside, it can seem kind of magic and obtuse and what what is all these characters and what do they mean. Um, so when we were doing research on this project of why aren't there so many people like us um, taking computer science in, in CS, the big thing that started standing out was that people just don't know what code is, especially kids. Um, they're not introduced to the idea of what's behind all the things you do on your phone and all the applications on the web and all the technology that you use and you get really good at using, but you just don't know how it's built. Um, so my partner and I, uh, when we were working on this project, looked at a couple different ways of kind of sharing 
the idea of what code is and getting people excited. We looked at maybe doing an iPhone game. We looked at maybe making a website. Um, but there's a lot of this stuff already out there. And it's doing, a, there's a lot of um, these resources that are doing a really good job teaching code once people know to look for it. But there's still that kind of gap between how do you get people to know to look for it? How do you get them to want to take a class? Especially when later on, like, maybe you're being pushed away from sciences sometimes, socially, or um, occasionally by teachers, which is hopefully fading these days with more programs. Um, but how do you get someone to say, I want to take that class, I want to learn this thing on my own on the web? Um, and so that's, that's really where the book came from, of this idea of when I was a kid, practically all my free time was spent reading or destroying things that I probably <laughs> should have been picking apart. Um, but reading, and reading fiction, and reading fantasy, and reading these stories. And you don't really see programmers in these stories. Has anyone kind of read a fiction novel with a programmer? Mm. Other than Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which is not particularly a kid's book. They're just not really out there right now, which is kind of weird, because you can tell all these sorts of exciting stories that use technology these days, because it's become such a big part of our lives. That you can't really tell a modern story without technology. Um, so the idea for this was, why not tell a fantasy story that has these aspects of like magic and adventure and solving problems that like really got me excited when I was um, growing up and still do. Um, but talk a little bit about programming and all the ways that it can be solve these problems and help you out um, on these adventures. Um, so that's that's where the story came from. So last year, um, I started running a Kickstarter campaign to kind of gauge if there was anyone who'd be interested in reading this um, and get a little bit of funding to help publish it. Um, and that was kind of an experience all in and of itself. Uh, because you go out there with this idea of like, there's a story that I want to tell, and the only way people are going to be able to read it is I can turn it into a book and I can get it into the hands of people who might want to read it. Um, and then you have to go out and ask if there's anybody who thinks that too. And the response to that was kind of astounding to me because there were hundreds of people who wanted to hear that story as well. And so we, um, we got backing from people in technology who wanted to see more women getting into technology. We saw uh, from people who had kids who they wanted their kids to be able to have this image of this is what I could do or these are the things that I could learn and it could be interesting. Um, and so that um, went pretty well. We funded, um, passed our goal in June. And then since then, I've been writing, um, which is kind of, writing fiction is kind of a change from writing code. Um, <laughs> um, a lot more leeway to end up somewhere you didn't expect. Um, but it, I've been writing fiction and, um, a lot longer than I've been writing code. Um, but they, they go well together. There's a lot of creativity in both of them. There's a lot of ability to be kind of playful with how you put things together. Um, so I've been working on this um, since since then, and it just came out a couple weeks ago. And now it's here, and hopefully it's exciting for you guys to read. So, are there any questions at this point? Otherwise, I can do like. I just have a, a quick comment. I find it interesting that in your expertise of working with computers, that you would write a book. You know, that technology didn't, that didn't become technology, but became a book. Is there a reason behind that? So that was, that was actually really interesting, because when we started this, this project looking to this question of why aren't there um, girls in CS doing technology, we immediately gravitated towards that technological answer of we should make an iPhone app. It should be a game. And as you play the game, um, you should be able to like build your own power up to using code. Um, or you should be able to navigate um, mazes and things by programming your character to do something. And we tested that. We made a bunch of prototypes of this, which is um, a lot of fun to make um, kind of paper versions of iPhone games and then bring them in. And you're kind of doing this side scroll where you've got an eight foot long piece of paper pulling it through a fake 
little cut out of an iPhone. <laughs> 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 it's too late, but it works. You kind of get a sense of how it would, how it would go. Um, but what we found there was we felt kind of guilty. We felt like we were tricking people into wanting to learn to code. Of like, you're playing this game, but we, we won't let you get to the next stage until you learn, until you learn something. And that felt not, not like the goal. Um, where if, when, you, when you want to learn to program and you're doing the programming, it's really cool in and of itself. It's fun to um, create these things and put them together and figure out the logic behind what you're typing. Um, and mixing that up with the stage of let's hide it under a game or let's hide it in some sort of technological thing there didn't quite seem to work. So we had the kids who were, you show them the game, you talk about it, and then kind of give the reaction. So they really wanted a game. And then they really wanted to learn to code. So you'd show them like app invent or scratch or some sort of way of um, really getting their hands on the computer. And all of a sudden the interest would shoot way up. Like, I can actually build something. Or I can play my game, but don't make me do both of them at once. Um, which was totally against what we thought was going to happen. Um, so at that point, um, we shifted more towards, let's just go the teaching route. Let's make a website that kind of focuses on projects and takes you directly into making something that has a result. Because there's a lot of um, resources online to teach programming, which some of you are probably familiar with, like Code Academy or the Khan Academy programming. Um, and a lot of these give you tools, but they just keep building up tools. Of this is this thing does this, and that thing does something else, and now you know how to use them. And so we were, we were looking at maybe um, turning that into every time you go building a mini project, and then those building on each other to make larger projects, but always having some sort of result. And that, I still think is actually a really cool way to do it, but that's not really my strong point of pedagogy of that, um, of how to make the teaching aspect um, work right. And so stepping back from that and saying, so what, what, is, what is the fundamental question here? And does it really have to be a technological solution? And the fundamental thing was, you need people to be excited, to think this is interesting, to go seek it out on their own. And if you've never heard of it, and you don't know what it is, you're never going to be able to look for it. And that was me up until college. Um, I had no idea that I would be interested in programming. Um, and a lot of, there's been a lot of research into this as well, of people being able to imagine themselves in, um, in jobs and roles, doing things, when they see themselves represented in media. Um, so in fiction, on TV, real life role models, but also um, fictional ones, people who don't exist, but you can kind of empathize with and imagine yourself doing that. Um, and you get a lot of that through, through novels, but there, there just aren't any. Um, that talk about kids the age of a bunch of you guys here um, learning programming, using programming. So it was kind of something that said kids still love to read. Kids have loved to read for a really long time. They're going to. And this really shaped my worldview. It shaped the worldview of a lot of people. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to, didn't have to be technological there. So that's where, that's where the book came from. childhood, was there a teacher or an adult who was really into some kind of 
science field that influenced you, or do you feel like you kind of happened upon this? I'm just wondering if there's a person that helped you along the way in some way. Um, so I had, so there are actually a couple people. First is my dad was really supportive of me tearing things apart. Mm -hmm. So long before I knew how um, programming worked and what code was, I knew what the inside of a hard drive looked like. And if you haven't torn apart a broken computer hard drive, it's really pretty on the inside. Mm -hmm. They're like mere disks that spin around. Um, so I would highly suggest breaking one apart. <laughs> if it's broken and no one needs it and the data's not working. Um, but so there was, that was kind of my intro into engineering was building things as a kid um, in high school. Um, and then that same mindset of how does the world work and how does all of this fit together to make things happen translates really well to computer science because it's the same fundamentals, just now everything's digital, right? Instead of um, mechanical. And then um, I had a couple of really good science teachers um, in middle school, actually, my sixth grade science teacher, um, who was again kind of, you should keep doing this. He mm -hmm. um, would bring projects in. And um, he'd be really supportive of keep trying this. What about, what if you tried that um, in addition? Um, so that, that shaped a lot of my path through engineering. So. Yeah. I'm curious why you, the Kickstarter campaign and why not a traditional publishing kind of route? So for a couple reasons. And the for, so I am hoping maybe to traditionally publish this later on. But the first question was, is anybody actually going to be interested in this? And so that's partly what Kickstarter is really good for. Is mm -hmm. There are people out there who agree with you that maybe this story is, is useful. Um, and it gets the, the ideas out there a little bit faster. Because one thing that I'd really like to see is other people like, starting to write about programming and starting to think about female characters who program. Um, and that's not going to happen. It's like hiding on my hard drive somewhere where nobody can see it. So um, maybe someday we'll see it from the best traditional publisher, but starting out here. I'm curious what happened with your senior project, if you wrote much of it after July, you said, and also your partner that you talked about didn't, uh, didn't want to be authors. Yeah, so my partner went to South America to study um, green building technology. Um, so she's been a little bit distant from the last half of the process. Um, and the other person who helped start it out um, worked, we worked together for the research phase and then when it shifted over into writing, I kind of um, pushed out there. Um, but the senior project part of it ended, um, ended last June, um, kind of with the conclusion of the Kickstarter and the idea that now I have the resources to go forward with this. So since then, it's become <coughs> um, it's become kind of its own standalone project of um, now this is just something that I'm doing. So, um, I have a question. Yeah. If if some of these young um, students here or young people had an interest in like different things like sports or music or building things, or just something like that. How, how, how does this relate to that? How does, can you kind of help them understand how learning how to code or learning technology skills would be of use to them? Yeah. And, you know? So programming is literally everywhere at this point. Um, one music example would be, um, very recently, um, so I'm, I'm still in school, I'm still doing my master's degree, and my roommate this past quarter built this crazy kaleidoscope creation, it's got bike wheels with, um, thank you, um, with colored uh, plastic that the light shines through in this gigantic mirror triangle, and the whole thing spins around and creates all this like great light show. But there's also magnets on the wheels, and the magnets go past the sensor. And the fact that you see this, they hooked it up to the computer and written this long set of code that controls um, the creation of music along with this crazy spinning kaleidoscope light thing. So it's in art, it's in music. Um, it was, besides the fact that there's coding in the book, there was coding to make the book, which 
which I had no idea was going to happen. But apparently, ebooks, which I didn't know before this, are um, formatted in a form of HTML. Um, so when I was taking the text and I was turning it into ebooks, um, distributed in that format, you open up a file and you go, oh, I know what this looks like. I can play with this code. And there's a lot of applications out there that let you make ebooks without dealing with it. But if you know what's on the back end of that, you can just go in there and change it and make it look exactly how you want without having to re rely on something that somebody else built, um, which may not do exactly what you want. So it's in publishing. Um, it's practically everywhere. Um, even just kind of understanding what's behind um, the technology that you use. If you know how it works, then you know why it breaks. And you can fix it, or you can make it do what you want it to even if that wasn't what it was intended for to start with. Um, any other? That's helpful. Instance? I'm just kind of wondering with some of these young um, people that are here, um, what kind of interest they have. And so we could kind of get a feel for how this relates to what they're interested in. You know, I don't know if parents brought them because they just want to expose them to this, or some of the students already have interests in technology. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So actually, for the for the kids who are here, um, do you have any particular interests that you've been looking into, or have you programmed at all before? Yeah. They've done stuff. So the four of us right here are four out of six of our three really robot master team. to um, these kids again in when they love building, they love science, they love those components, but then they struggle with like maybe some of the rote everyday frustrations of math that might come up. So ways that might encourage kids to say, hey, that's okay. <laughs> What's your perspective on that? Yeah, so the a lot of programming doesn't require a lot of math. And that's one of those things that like people don't say all the time. Like computer science gets lumped in with like math and science and like natural sciences. And in a lot of ways, it's really different because it's more about logical thinking. And can you, can you think about how to build this thing and um, consider what might happen and what you want it to do? And there, there is programming that can require math. If you want to do statistics or you want to do analysis on large amounts of data, you're eventually going to need to learn some math. Um, to do that, but a lot of it, a lot of websites and a lot of um, building apps and data processing, very minimal math. And the other cool thing is that <laughs> the, math, the math that you do need for a lot of the, the higher up, it's so much more interesting than the math that you're doing right now. Math um, <laughs> the key. <laughs> it's really it's better. Um, first, so first couple years of, of college, they make you take a lot of required math. So you do, do a lot of calculus, you do a lot of stuff, which is kind of interesting, but can be tricky and can be kind of dull depending on how it's taught. But then you get into like CF theory and there's like sets and there's all these really cool things that are just applications of logic. Um, and if you can kind of stick it out until you get there, you're gonna have so much fun. Um, and even if you don't, don't want to, you just kind of want to move away from that, you don't really need the math to do some really cool things. So that's kind of my take on that. <laughs>
Um, so for my undergraduate degree, I did product design, um, which is more on the physical side of building um, mechanical objects, and then I'm doing a master's in computer science and human-computer human interaction. Um, but like that sort of area, I think. 